Is your Doberman barking all of the time? And is that barking driving you or maybe even your neighbors absolutely crazy? Well, if you do have a Doberman that is barking far too much, don't worry, because that is exactly what I'm gonna help you with in today's video. Welcome back to the Femria Doberman Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemriaCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to teach, helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the Doberman and then teaching you how to be a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Doberman companions. So if you love Dobermans as much as we do, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell and you'll never miss a future Doberman video. So as a canine behaviorist and one that specializes in mostly large, powerful guardian breeds, these kinds of excessive, irritating, annoying barking behaviors kind of are my bread and butter. Now, obviously, there's the more intense, extreme behaviors like aggression and fighting that we often have to help owners deal with. But in terms of things that aren't quite that extreme, yet are still extremely frustrating, barking is right up there. And when it comes to Dobermans, it is a very common one. So what we're going to focus on today is through my experience, when I have a client come to me with excessive barking issues, it falls into one of two categories. The first, is that it's obnoxious annoying barking behaviors all of the time we're going to talk about that and we're also going to talk about when a dog is displaying guarding instincts it's barking to sound an alert but it's going too far and you can't get it to turn those things off and we're going to talk about that in today's video as well so we're going to start with this first part that is the obnoxious irritating barking now this tends to stem from well, it always stems from poor leadership, but it tends to happen with inexperienced owners that may have made the mistake of choosing a Doberman for their first breed. So when we're dealing with that, it most commonly is caused and it's a learnt behavior by the dog and it's inadvertently caused by the owner and they don't understand where it was that they taught the dog that that behavior was acceptable. The most common culprit is when the dog's a puppy, it wants some attention and some praise and it might jump up or bark. We're busy doing something and little puppy starts barking and we go, oh, hey buddy, how are you? You okay? Dog over time learns that for me to get what I want, I have to bark. When I bark, I get what I want. Then the dog gets older and it's big. And then suddenly this person's now annoyed at me because the novelty of a puppy's worn off and it just becomes a little bit of a mess. How do we go about fixing that problem? If you can honestly say, I think that's the situation I'm in. Well, first and foremost, we absolutely must restructure our relationship with our dog. And that is why we design and implement our bootcamp protocol with all the clients that we work with. There is a link to it in the description box below, by the way, if you are interested. That bootcamp protocol is a one month process that I have designed and implemented countless times now that helps the owner because it's all about the owner I am helping teach the owner how to work with their dog as opposed to coming in and doing it for them that would be really easy but it's useless for you as the owner so the boot camp process teaches the owner the concepts required to be a high level canine leader themselves and then a structured process throughout the month to be able to restructure that relationship and have a dog that sees you as a calm consistent leader looks up to you for guidance and direction and follows your rules boundaries and expectations that's what the boot camp process goes through and we start by going through that process eight or nine times out of ten especially with simple behavior problems and behavior modification programs like excessive barking simply going through that process fixes those issues for us and we might get to the end of the month and the clients mesmerize they can't believe about not only how it's fixed barking but all these other smaller frustrating areas have fallen down by the wayside as well so that's what we start with if after that process we can come in and clearly see that the client has followed that process they have been able to restructure that relationship and these behaviors are still happening and when you we use a very basic correct redirect and reinforce based program the dog displays that behavior these kind of things happen a lot when these bad established habits have been ingrained for years and even though we've gone through that process and restructured that relationship it's a very habitual habit for the dog to display those behaviors so we need to be able to come in and help them understand that we don't do that anymore and I'm in charge and I'm telling you we don't do that so the second that barking goes in we hit it with a hit it that sounds terrible doesn't it but we go in with a verbal correction we go straight in verbal so bark ah, ah, no very clear chest back chest out stand up tall calm consistent leadership we're not flapping we're not beating the dog in any form just a very quick clear consistent stop doing what you're doing sometimes that's all we leave it with and we go away and the dog completely loses our attention we go to the polar opposite of what they're used to 
and we completely ignore the behavior that in itself is a correction and the dog learns oh that doesn't get me what i want it to anymore that's annoying sometimes we go in with a verbal correction and then we'll very quickly redirect them to the desired behavior that we want which is always a calm quiet well-mannered patient dog so we might go in with a verbal correction we then put them down into a nice sit and stay we then remove our attention back to what it is that we were doing we might wait a few seconds to start with then we come back in and give them praise and reward and the dog learns oh okay cool if i sit here calmly and quietly then i get what i want we expand that and we work on that and we drill it not only when the dog's barking but also in other areas we try and catch them when they are being calm and quiet and we give them praise then and over time the dog will learn this process happens this undesirable behavior that happens all the time will start to happen less the desirable behavior of being a calm quiet patient well-mannered dog will start to increase this usually happens through the boot camp process and over the month we get to this point anyway and that's where we lose all of these negative behaviors and we're left with the desirable ones if that doesn't happen which happens sometimes we just kind of finish off that process by correcting away the last bits and the remainders of the negative behaviors and we praise and we reinforce the desirable ones until that's all we're left with and then we can stop correcting the dog and we simply utilize this relationship of being a calm consistent leader and the communication pathways that we've earned through that process with our dog to be able to have the wonderful life that we've always dreamed of that's a very quick overview of how we process those kind of difficulties with a Doberman. If we go to the other end of the spectrum, where we might have a dog that's being overly guarding, overly alerting with their barking behaviors, and that's what's causing the frustrations. First and foremost, we have to start with a little bit of a tough love conversation of if that is a problem, why on earth did you get a Doberman? That is what they are bred to do. It's in them. And I will not come into a situation and I will not punitively correct that behavior out of a Doberman. That's not fair on a Doberman. That is poor leadership and poor decision making on your part. What we can do, however, is be able to come into that environment. The dog has sounded the alarm like a guard dog should, like a Doberman should. That is what we want them for as guard dogs to let us know when there's somebody there that shouldn't be that's not fair to expect them to be able to determine whether it's a postman or a burglar it's simply somebody is coming that shouldn't be here because you're not in this family already so they alert we need to be able to come in and say thank you i appreciate you letting me know but remember i am in control i am in charge i'm taking ownership of this situation and i want you to go and sit over there be calm patient and well-mannered until i tell you otherwise that is how we go about addressing those kinds of behaviors and we utilize a simple place command. So first of all, we go in and we assess the situation. Sometimes it takes a bit of honesty on the owner's part. Sometimes I have to come in and observe what's happening. Does that dog see you as a calm, consistent leader? Are you a high level calm, consistent leader? Are you, do you have a dog that looks up to you for guidance and direction and follows your rules, boundaries and expectations? If the answer to that is no, then again, we start with the boot camp process. Then we move on to step two. If the answer is yes, then we can move straight into step two, which is more of a basic obedience type of behavior modification program. Again, we simply teach them the place command and then we assign the place command to when somebody comes to the door. So we get it to a point of the dog goes bark, bark, bark. Thank you very much place you now go to place you go into a sit and stay again this is all very positive obedience based training you stay in that sit and stay until i tell you you can break and we do that again consistently every single time i'll do a whole video on how to teach your dog to do the place command it's very straightforward there's tons of videos already teaching you how to do it but if you like my style of videos and teaching i'm definitely keen to to do some of those videos for you but we teach the principle and the process of the place command and then we assign it to this certain environment and this certain situation that occurs in our life and the dog quickly understands okay cool we're now working together as a team i am working for you as my calm consistent leader i have got a job now i come in someone's there bark 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 i then go and sit and wait patiently until you tell me otherwise again god forbid that turns into a difficult situation the doberman's there if required 99.99 .99 times out of 100 especially 
especially in England, America, areas of Europe where those kinds of crime are much lower than many other areas of the world. Hopefully our Doberman will never be needed for any kind of actual physical intervention in terms of guarding duties, but they'll simply go and sit and wait patiently until we tell them otherwise. That's the principle. I hope you found that useful and there's lots of tips and tricks in there to help you have your Doberman be a perfect Doberman companion. If you did enjoy it, I really appreciate it when you hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out, allows us to help you out even more. Hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. That way you'll never miss a future Doberman video. And we've got two Doberman videos specific to this channel every single week. So if you love Dobermans and you don't want to miss those, that's what that subscribe and notification bell is for. And I can't wait to see you on the next episode of the Fenrir Doberman Show.